Hey there, my name is Ray Parvis and I am a certified style coach and author of Ultimate Guide to Style from Drab to Fab. This is a limited series called Wine and Wardrobe with Rain. Each episode will be filled with fun stories and super simple stylish advice to help us feel more connected. In this episode, I'm going to be interviewing Bonnie Poye from Poye Photos. I've personally been hiring her since 2006. She's amazing. I know you're going to love her. Her motto is the photographer for people who don't like to pose and it couldn't be more true. Her photos are amazing. <laughs> okay, we're going to be chit chatting about the biggest problem she sees people making with their headshots, how we can fix it, and my personal experience with working with her. Here's a little bit more of information about Bonnie. She has over 20 plus years of experience shooting headshots in Los Angeles. Bonnie, excuse the baby in the background. <laughs> Bonnie has been voted one of Los Angeles' favorite photographers by backstage readers three years in a row. She's been educating actors on the importance of understanding headshots as a marketing tool with her blog since 2008. Visit her website to download her free wardrobe guide for getting the perfect look for your next headshot. That's on poyephotos.com. You're definitely gonna wanna download it. I've downloaded it. She's personally taught me everything I know about styling headshots for actors and for people, for entrepreneurs, and they're all kind of a different animal and skill. So I know, no, no, you're gonna love what Bonnie Poye has for us. Let's go ahead and hop on over to the interview. With COVID-19 happening and everything else, I know that you are currently open back up shop. So you are doing photos right now, but what is your wardrobe like? What's your go-to uniform? <laughs> that has nothing to do with COVID-19. I've always had a uniform. I always wear jeans or jean shorts and some sort of a t-shirt or like a top. So I, I don't do one piece. I don't do dresses when I'm working. And I'm so sick of my uniform. <laughs> I could so use some rain advice, let me tell you. Well, when I first saw you on Zoom, I was like, oh my gosh, you're wearing leopard print because I've known you. Can you believe I've known you since 2006? That's crazy. Crazy. <laughs> Don't say that. No, I know. So we're, I guess, we're mature, but we still mm -hmm. look like we did in 2006, if you ask me. <laughs> Actually, yes, I agree. I agree. Better better. I've never seen you in a fun print like that. So I appreciate your hair, your leopard print. I just love well, it. Well, of course. I'm like being interviewed by the best stylist in LA. I'm gonna dress to impress, girl. <laughs> no, I love Bonnie. What is the biggest mistake that entrepreneurs and actors make when they are shooting with you? Or in general? Okay. The biggest mistake I've come across is the inability, I'm talking about actors first, the inability to understand their brand. I recently had a woman who's this amazing character actress and she's really good in front of the camera because the way I work with actors is I direct them and so I can tell when they respond to my direction how good they are because we're literally doing acting exercises. And she's really good, but she was just really self-conscious about her teeth. And um, she had these um, like faux teeth that she would put on for half of the look. And it, to me, that's not awareness of brand. It actually took her out of her brand and tried to make her look like something she's not. And therefore the headshots will not be effective. Mm -hmm. So it's really important. And you know, sometimes people are in denial, but it's important that you understand your brand and get the help that you need to get to that point. Because to me, it's a waste of money to take headshots when you're off brand. So that's the actor part, but go ahead. Were you going to say something? Yes. So this is going to be a different question, but I remember I read on your website that one of the things that you said was my goal is not to give you the most beautiful photo you've ever taken. There's plenty of opportunity for that when you're big, but you kind of hit yeah. You wanted to emphasize them and who they are as a brand, as an actor entrepreneur. Right. So for entrepreneurs, um, the goal is to make somebody warm and approachable because they're usually in the business of selling a service or, you know, a service that they provide. Um, so a lot of my entrepreneurs are, you know, I have a lot of actually lawyers as well, but a lot of business owners. And so the key to coming across warm and approachable is to let me direct you and be fluid and allow for a back and forth because I engage my subjects, especially people who aren't actors, who aren't 
used to being in front of the camera. So the key is to just allow that engagement to happen organically so that you come across warm and approachable and pretty shouldn't be the number one concern, especially if you're an entrepreneur, because pretty, I told my gynecologist, she needs new headshots because her headshots, she's trying to look like a model. And I'm like, well, you know, we're not going to take you seriously. You know, you're just, you're trying too hard. You look like the hot girl and she's hot. I get it, but it's not professional. And with actors, it's the same thing. My specialty, I just naturally gravitated towards um, doing more uh, real people than pretty people. And so that's my brand as a photographer. And so my specialty is to bring out personality and not focus so much on making you look like a supermodel. And there are photographers who do that. And I think there are clients who are right for that kind of photo, but I think the average person um, needs to focus on their personality and bringing that out and selling their acting chops in a still photo instead of how pretty they are. I think the goal with actors is to bring out an emotional arc in each character and show your agents and show casting directors your ability to become those characters. So for those of you who don't know, obviously I love me some Vane Poye and I kind of stalk her. I read all the blogs. You have made me a better stylist since I started working with you. And that's oh, when you're you giving me too much credit. <laughs> well, that's one thing. When I first started uh, personal styling, which was still 10 years ago, I can't even believe it. Personal styling, when you do it in everyday life is different yeah. than would work for a headshot. When we look at some of your photos, especially your commercial ones, you may have this really bright green sweater with an orange striped top that in person you'd be like, uh, but <laughs> photo, it looks so amazing and so commercial esque and it brings out everything comes to life. And like you said on your website, the best animated animated version of ourself or yourself, and you capture that. And I think that that's like one of the keys that a lot of people just like don't resonate. It's not just, you know, showing up in a button up shirt. It's so much more than that. Yeah. So the difference, you know, with wardrobe, I, I always tell my clients with actors anyway, I tell them it's not about what looks good on you. It's about what the character would wear. Yeah. So if you were to dress this character for an audition, how would you dress that character? Basically, they come to you when they don't want to do the work but that's the work people should be doing, right? And then a lot of my dating clients that I send to you are basically what I ask that my social media dating clients do, because I also do portraits for social media dating, and those are entrepreneurs, but I have different types of sessions. I have like a business session for LinkedIn and like someone's website, professional website versus social media dating. And for my dating clients, I always tell them that you should think of wardrobe because I shoot unlimited wardrobes. Like they can change as many times as they want to. For the dating ones, because my dating shots are not in the studio, they're environmental and they're meant to look like they were candid shots taken on different days and different times and different places, even though they're not. Right. But that's my little secret trick. So the dating thing is what would you wear to different events? You know, I tell people to bring me a variety of like eight to 10 clothes and I hate it when they show up with five t-shirts that are all the same, but in different colors. That's just redundant. That makes no sense. So when I send them to you, I'm like, it's usually, well, they're like, I don't know. I don't know. I only like have four things. I'm like, okay, well, Rain will help you. And the goal is to like, think of what you might wear to an evening event, let's say like a walk at the beach or shopping at the promenade on a Saturday during normal times, of course. So that's what I tell my dating clients and my social media clients is to think of like, like events to put together a wardrobe. Coffee, so. dinner. Yeah. Like you said, like walk in the beach. It's kind of like you're yeah. in one of the, a dating profile. Yeah, exactly. And then that way you're not being redundant, you know, so. Do you use the same technique? Because I know with your commercial shots, 
there, like you said, like I can recognize a bonnet poye photo from, like, <laughs> from across the room. And then, so do you use the same kind of animated, colorful stuff for those social dating profiles or entrepreneurs? Is it different? No, no, that's way more different. Um, because for actors, the goal is to bring out your personality, number one. Number two, to bring out specific characters that you are able to play and audition for. And then number three, to show them your acting and so you can be animated because some of those characters are animated but for real people um, especially for dating and social media it's really all about how they look in real life in different settings so i still direct quite a bit and i always engage my subjects no matter what kind of session i'm doing because i find that engaging people just kind of gets them out of their head and makes them comfortable and they're not worried about how to smile they're you know like they're doing or i'm doing things to make them smile but they're more real they're more like situational they're very candid like if you went to my social media portfolio you'll see they're just they're just like a moment in time but it's very real it's almost like what wedding photographers do but not for a wedding so different same scenarios one of the things that i remember yeah. um, you know that i shot with you a lot of the times was I always do this on every shoot, and I also tell people to say money. I know, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> money is like this natural. Money. So I always try, yeah. hey, if you're on a shoot, this great tip, just say money so you won't get that like super duper fake smile. <laughs> fake smile, I know, right? Oh no, I can't do fake smiles. One of the things I also, when somebody comes to me and they don't know who you are and they said, oh, I, I need to photo shoot this and this, the one of the things that I absolutely love about you is you do have a backup plan. I know that if I send you someone, whether it's actor, entrepreneur, and God forbid, I made a mistake and didn't put something in the thing or they left something at home or whatever it is, you will pull stuff out because you have a closet there, right? For a backup is something yeah. you have it. So that's one of the things I love about shooting with Bonnie Poy. You have a little backup wardrobe plan. Okay, but, but it is a backup plan closet full of clothes but don't rely on that you know I, it's so funny because somebody just today i was on the phone with was like so you have clothes in your closet and i because he's seen my stuff on instagram and i was like yes but i don't have everything in everyone's size it is a backup plan so still do your homework and bring what you have and you know and then if something's missing i might be able to you know come up with something from my closet <laughs> What is your number one thing for entrepreneurs if they are professionals that you think that they should shoot in? You know, that really depends on the audience that they're trying to attract, like who their target market is, really. I'll tell you what my approach is. And, you know, during the consultation, I find out who their target market is or what they do for a living. And there's two specific types of sessions that I offer in the studio for business people. Uh, I'm not talking about social media because again, entrepreneurs can also buy the social media package, which is very, very different. That's meant to look candid and outdoors and last like six months to a year with a bunch of photos. My business stuff for someone's website, there's two options. There's an in-studio paper backdrop, and then there's an in-studio textured backdrop. So a textured backdrop makes somebody look a little bit more casual because it's blurry textures that are not obtrusive in any way. And on that, you can juxtapose a suit and look very casual but professional at the same time. So that's one option. And then the other option, so again, it just depends on what you're trying to achieve. The other option is with the paper, the lighter the color, the more contemporary and I guess clean, and publicity like the photo becomes so the darker the background the more intense the message becomes or the more conservative it becomes so for my like very conser conservative law firms for example I do a darker background so those are the ways that I approach it but I have to ask you questions to figure out what your needs are before I make any suggestions so you pretty much said not everybody should shoot in a super duper light white background yeah, I did. But honestly, the thing is that I'm not a big believer in like white backgrounds wash people out because 
you if you light it properly, it doesn't. It, anyone can shoot on white, but I'm saying that it depends on your target market. Like white is good for contemporary. It's super classic. It never goes out of style. It goes with everything. So it can hop from your website to LinkedIn without any clashes in colors. It's also great for beauty, anybody in the beauty industry. Um, but it's not great for, let's say, a conservative lawyer. Right. What do you think is the ultimate takeaway if somebody was interested in doing a photo shoot? Like, what is the one thing that they should look for when they're looking for a photographer? Well, that depends on who they are. So if we're talking about entrepreneurs, I think that, you know, honestly, it's actually the same answer in different ways. So for entrepreneurs, you have to look for a photographer who fits your brand. Don't try to make a photographer whose work doesn't already fit your brand to fit, to kind of like modify what they do. You know, don't show them pictures of photos you've seen from a different photographer that you don't want to hire because they're too expensive and then try to make this other photographer whose style is totally different to shoot like that because it doesn't work. So you, you know, entrepreneurs are definitely in tune with their brand. And so find a photographer whose brand fits yours. And then also just always look for consistency, look for not just what's in their portfolio and consistency that way, but I would look for what they're posting on social media day to day so that you can really see their day to day work and make sure that it's consistent because people can kind of like handpick their best work for their portfolio, you know, and just leave it up there. Obviously, reviews are really important. You want to see what your peers are saying. So definitely check out reviews. And then for actors, it kind of, I guess, you know, I came to realize it is the same answer. If you are a character actor, you want to look for photographers who shoot character actors and don't try to make the photographer who specializes in beauty and shooting like models and CW people don't try to make that person shoot you because you're either going to be off brand with your photos or they're not going to do a good job because they don't have practice doing character shots. That was a perfect takeaway, but I do have one more quick question that has kind of, I forgot about that's driving me nuts. When okay. I'm looking for a photographer, when I'm studying other people's work, because sometimes I'll style someone and they go to a different photographer and I kind of like go like this because I'm like, oh, I hope it comes out okay. <laughs> <laughs> things that I noticed that kind of that is not done a lot with entrepreneurs is sometimes they'll use the same exact background, which I personally don't think you should use the same exact background for every single role you're going to play, or you can use the same background. And this is just my opinion. If you are an entrepreneur, okay, you'll get like a couple shots and that that's fine. But when it comes to actors, sometimes they're all in the same background. And then another pet peeve of mine, you can answer a, a double duty is when one of the things I just love about your work is one, of course, how bright and animated everybody is, but then the background is blurry. So the subject always comes first. So I'm always a big fan of having the subject come first. And then when I see other photographers, the background is as crystal clear as the subject, which, so when I look at that, I automatically think that that's like an amateur photographer, but some of these yeah. Are not amateur they're like any big big bucks so what is your opinion what is that what is what is your opinion on that that is amateur a portrait for this particular purpose for marketing yourself which is what entrepreneurs business people and actors are doing needs to be about you so the background cannot be you know crystal clear like that but obviously if you're doing some sort of artistic portrait of somebody, you know, for, uh, for art or for a magazine cover, the, you, there are no rules like that, but that's not what you're doing. So yeah, that's amateur. Everyone's got an opinion. I just, I don't know that there's a right or wrong, but I feel like just my opinion is that it is more effective to change up the background because it tells a story. It helps complete the story of the character. When I do different backgrounds, I am trying to make sure that it complements what I'm shooting, the character. And then again, like I said, for entrepreneurs and business people, it has to coincide with the target market and the message that they're trying to send. And, you know, on that note, how I decide to do an environmental session for an entrepreneur versus an in-studio session is I 
ask them if the environment will help move their marketing message forward. So in other words, a lawyer sitting at a desk makes sense. The CEO of a construction company on site of a construction site makes sense but who was it just recently wanted an environmental shot and it didn't make sense because it did nothing to move her marketing message forward to her audience. So in her case, it was okay to do an in-studio shoot with a flat background or a textured background. So my, my backgrounds are definitely like, I'm mindful of picking out backgrounds that match marketing the person. Or the character. When you go to get a headshot, it's not just like Bonnie was saying, it's not just you looking pretty or in some, so many elements go into it, which I know that Bonnie hits and that you should think about when you are either, even with your iPhone, if you're doing iPhone, I know some of us like don't always have the, all the money to do all this stuff, but think about the elements in the background. Think about your wardrobe. Think about what Bonnie was saying. Should you have a plain white background? So Bonnie, can you please tell everybody uh, your website and how to find you? Sure. So it's my last name, Poye, P as in Paul, O-Y-E-Y. -Y. It's in my handle, poyephotos.com. That's my website. And you can email me or call me directly from there or find me on Instagram, which is also connected to my website or read my blog, which is on my website. Everything's on my website. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Bonnie. Don't forget to tune in next week when we are interviewing Monica Lead from the very famous Simply Space. See you then.